All right. So like I said before, uh, working with our geometric problems, we will need to have more questions. We need to work with more revisions uh, so that we can get to understand how these questions are given. So on this exercise, it's actually working with more geometric problems, angles, uh, relationships on parallel lines, and also considering uh, the concept of a straight line angle. So on a straight line adding up to 180 and all those uh, revisions that you had on your parallel lines, make sure that you watch the video on parallel lines on its own so that you do understand all the types of angles that are on the parallel lines. So in this case, Number one, we're going to quickly rush through our questions. Calculate the sizes of angle one to angle seven. We are given these angles and we are only given one angle of 154 degrees. We had a question like this on our introduction where we, had, where we are given just one angle and you need to fill in all these angles. All right. Let's consider angle one referred to angle of 154 degrees. That's a straight line. And we do understand that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So meaning to say these two angles, they add up to 180 degrees. So if you subtract 154 degrees from uh, 180 degrees, you are going to obtain uh, the remaining angle because there are just two angles that you are given there. And that was going to be uh, 26 degrees. So meaning to say there, we have got uh, 26 degrees angles on a straight line. So angle one is 26 degrees. Uh, there we are using the reason angles on a straight line. We can use the vertically opposite angles to determine angle two. These two angles, remember from the straight lines, that's angle two will be equal to 154 degrees, vertically opposite or you can use angle one and angle two. They are on a straight line, so they must add up to 180 degrees. Still, you are going to obtain the same 154 degrees. Angle two, uh, this angle three and angle one, vertically opposite angles. So it means our angle three is equal to 26 degrees. Remember, vertical opposite angles are equal. Or you can use angles on a straight line. Still that is going to give us the same angle. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. All right, there we have got um, angle 26, which is the same as our angle four, uh, considering the Z angles, alternate angles, the ones that create a Z. So if this is 26, this is also 26. Remember vertically, or I mean, uh, the alternate angles, they are equal. So angle four, is equal to angle 26, or you could have used the concept from angle two and angle four. These are core interior angles. Core interior angles add up to 180, so you're simply gonna subtract this from 180. You obtain the 26 degrees. That's our angle four. Angle five, you can also use that concept of the alternate angles to angle two. That's we are creating a Z there. So angle five is equal to angle two, which is equal to 154 degrees. That is alternate angles. You can use the core interior angles. It's up to you. Remember core interior angles add up to 180. You can use angles on a straight line. Remembering that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. All right, angle six and angle five, vertically opposite angles. So angle six is equal to 154 degrees. Remember, vertically opposite angles are equal. Angle four and Z, uh, this angle seven, they are vertically opposite angles again. So meaning to say our angle seven is 26 degrees, or you can use angles on a straight line from that way, or you can use this way, angle five and angle seven are on a straight line or the vertically opposite angles. That is to mean this angle is 26 degrees. So this is the way that you can answer, guys, using those reasons that you're given there. You can answer any question. Calculate the sizes of X, Y, and Z on question number two. All right, there we are given an indication there of the parallel lines, meaning to say we can determine a lot of things from what we have. Remember the concept of uh, the Z there, 
alternate angles. So the angle Z in this case and this angle 33, they are alternate to each other. So angle Z is equal to 33 degrees alternate angle. So that is the reason that you're going to have there. These are alternate angles. Also, if you consider that Z concept there, angle Y and this angle at B, they create that Z even though it is on the other way. So meaning to say if this is 21, Y is also going to be uh, 21 degrees. These are also alternate angles. They form a Z. What about angle X? Angle X and this Z are on a straight line, A to E to B. That's a straight line, remember? And you know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So meaning to say to find X, we are simply going to subtract that from 180 degrees. X and Z, they are on a straight line. And we know that our Z is uh, 33 degrees. Remember, Z is 33 degrees. So we can determine our X. Just take this 33 to the other side of the equation. It will become a minus 33. So that means we are going to have the difference of 180 and 33 degrees on the on the other hand. That difference of 147, that is equal to 147 degrees. Meaning to say, we have got our angle X there. That is it, X, Y, and Z are there. All right, on this other part, you also need to determine these angles A, B, C, and D. From this diagram, let's see what we are given. And what is easier to find? TS is parallel to this PR, the wall of this line, PQR. So we can consider anything about parallel lines if it is possible. All right, let's see what we got on this part. Uh, I want us to see them. We have got the part of the F. There's so many ways that you can actually work with. As you can see here, we are forming that F. So this angle B and this angle 48, these ones. They are equal. They form an F, corresponding angles. So angle B and this angle S, uh, that is this angle 48, they are equal. So there we are talking of the corresponding angles. That is the reason that you're going to write uh, corresponding angles, since these two lines are parallel to S and what? And PR. Okay, and at the angle, we can find angle C. From which concept? These are angles on a straight line. 154 and C is on a straight line. So to find C, just subtract 154 degrees from uh, 180 degrees. So if you subtract this, uh, that was going to be 26 degrees. So there we have got angle C uh, being 26 degrees. That's 26. All right, we need angle A and B, which concept that we can use there we are creating a Z. Look from the parallel lines there, we are creating a Z. So meaning to say, these are alternate angles A and C, they are alternate. Remember Z angles, alternate angles are equal. So A is equal to angle C, which is equal to the angle of 26 degrees. So that's angle A is 26 degrees. All right, what about angle D? Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So you can use that concept. That is the angle of 48 degrees plus this angle A, which is 26 degrees, plus the angle D must give us 180 degrees. These are angles on a straight line. So you can give the reason that is angles on a straight line. So you can also add the angles that uh, you're given, 48 and the 26 degrees, which is 74. So that is 74 degrees plus D is equal to 180 degrees. So transpose this 74 to the other hand, that will be a minus 74 degrees this side, all right? So this cancels, so D is equal to 180 minus uh, 74. So the difference there, that is of 106 degrees is going to be our D, so D, is 160 degrees. If you add these angles on a straight line, you must obtain 180 degrees. These angles are on a straight line. So that is how you answer these typical questions, giving those reasons that you are given. You can find any angle working with your straight lines and also understanding the properties of a straight line.